Hello and welcome to a demo of Batfish Enterprise. My name is Ratul and I will show you how you can easily track and understand the evolution of your cloud network's connectivity matrix and security posture. Cloud networks such as AWS, Microsoft Azure and GCP evolve constantly. While it is easy to maintain a log of network configuration changes, it is very difficult to assess the end-to-end -end impact of those individual changes on security and service availability. For instance, which flow is your network allowing today that it did not allow yesterday? Such assessments are easy to make with Batfish Enterprise. You can view exactly which resources and communication channels have been opened or closed across time. Let me show you how. This is the Batfish Enterprise dashboard. It visualizes your entire cloud topology so you can easily understand how resources are interconnected. My network is spread across two regions, East here and West region here. Um, each region has multiple VPCs which belong to different business groups within the company. Intra-region connectivity is provided via transit gateways, one here and one here. And across regions connectivity is provided via VPC peering links that you see here. The network has a bunch of instances. It also has load balancers and NAT gateways as well as internet gateways to provide connectivity to and from the internet. As you can tell, even this small network has a lot of moving parts that can be independently configured. So the question is, if the configuration for any of these pieces changes, do you know what impact it has on the end-to-end -end connectivity and security of your network? And that's the problem we look at today. The configuration of your AWS deployment is automatically retrieved and visualized by Batfish, and Batfish also archives past data so you can compare the security and connectivity matrix of your network across any two points in time. So to compare two snapshots of your network, we go to the Compare tab. What the Compare tab shows you is differences amongst your snapshots across these categories. For AWS, it will show resources like security groups, and we'll be adding more resources like network ACLs, how your devices, so instances for instance, have been changed, and how interface definitions themselves have changed. One of my favorite categories is reachability category, which is doing a comprehensive analysis across all possible sources in the network and all possible destinations and all possible header spaces and telling you if there's any change in reachability at all. So in this view, for instance, we know that this current snapshot, which is the latest one, and using the snapshot right before it as reference, we have no changes in reachability. Now, let's assume you wanted to understand the difference in reachability between the current snapshot and yesterday. So I'm going to pick the last snapshot taken yesterday, which is March 29th. And what we see here is a comprehensive view of reachability difference. The rows here of this matrix, we have the sources of traffic. On the columns here, we have destination of traffic. If any flows are added, we show them in blue. And if any shows are removed, we show them in yellow. So what we see here is a bird's eye view which is saying that some flows that were not allowed by the network yesterday are being allowed today, both from internet and AWS and sources and heading into AWS. Now, if you were curious which flows these were, we can click here to get a granular view of the destination. So we see that these flows are being allowed in the east region and not the west one. So I can click this deeper and it's telling me, oh, these flows were allowed in the VPC HR East, not in the Finance East. If I click further, it shows me that, oh, these flows are being allowed going into public subnet for HR East. Further East, it's like, oh, this is an instance. So it's basically showing me that some new flows from the internet and AWS are being allowed into this particular host. If I wanted to understand which flows these are, I can click on this cell here. And what it shows me are the flow headers from the internet to this instance that are being allowed now and were not being allowed yesterday. So we see these flows have protocol TCP, the port is 33066, which is kind of funny looking port. And all the source IPs and destination IPs are 3224, which is the public IP of that instance. Now, if I wanted even further detail, I can go here. And what this view is showing me for that example flow that we picked out, what happens to traffic in my current snapshot on the left and in my reference snapshot from yesterday on the right. So we see that in both of the cases, traffic is going all the way from the internet to the server. But in reference snapshot, that flow is being denied here by the security group, which we can see denied here. But it's being allowed here, which we can see permitted. Now, if you wanted to understand why the security group is permitting this flow, we can click on the test filters link here. And what this view shows us is why that flow is being allowed by the security group. So we see that the security group here is called Terraform with this date here. And what we see here is that it matching a rule with description 
temporary backdoor for testing connectivity. So it appears that somebody had installed a temporary backdoor for testing connectivity which they perhaps forgotten to take out. Now these sorts of very point vulnerabilities are almost impossible to find using any other tool but Batfish finds it for you very easily. Now that we understand this security group is to blame, we can also go back and check what exactly the change was and when it was made. To do that, we go back to the original compare page and click on the security groups tab. What this shows is that relative to yesterday, this rule has been added, thus confirming a suspicion that a new rule was added that was allowing that additional traffic. Now, if you wanted to understand when exactly this rule was added, we can compare our current snapshot to other references. So if I compare it to the one right before it, I see no change in security groups, so thus a change must have been made earlier. So we compare it to the one before that. Again, no change, that means the change must have been made earlier than that. If I compare it that. So now we see that this rule was added somewhere between this one and this one. Thus, the snapshot right after it was the first one where this rule was added. Now that we've exactly identified the snapshot, we can go figure out who made that change and why. Thanks for tuning into this Batfish Enterprise demo. In this video, I showed you how Batfish Enterprise makes it easy for you to understand the evolution of your network. You can see not only configuration changes, but also the impact of these changes on the full connectivity matrix of your network. And you can easily link those types of changes. This capability is incredibly useful for troubleshooting and tracking network evolution to ensure that it's secure and available at all possible times. Want to see this in action in your own infrastructure? Get your own free trial of Batfish Enterprise at that URL. Goodbye now.